This episode is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear. It's snowing again, and that wind chill is killer. But you're not worried about that because you shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection. It's warmth perfected with tiny gold dots that reflect your body heat inside and protect you from the cold outside. No snow or chilly temps can stop you now. Go out anyway. Shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection now at Columbia.com slash infinity. Saturday. Christmas comes early. Unbelievable. Welcome to this incredible scene. Bills. To the end zone. Chargers. It's a touchdown. An exclusive NFL game. This is fantastic. Live in primetime. Wow. Only on Peacock. With a Christmas gift to their fans. They're having some fun now. Bills versus Chargers. Saturday, 7.30 Eastern. Exclusively on Peacock. Reboot your credit card with Apple Card, the credit card created by Apple. It gives you unlimited daily cash back that you can now choose to grow in a high-yield savings account that's built right into the Wallet app. Apply for Apple Card now in the Wallet app on iPhone and start growing your daily cash with savings today. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility requirements. Savings accounts provided by Goldman Sachs Bank USA. Member FDIC. Terms apply. The holidays are a time to feel and create joy. And what could be more joyous than the look on her face as she unwraps a stunning new jewelry piece from Blue Nile? How about getting 50% off your purchase? Blue Nile offers premium quality, priced below traditional retail. Their online experts are available 24-7 to answer any questions and make sure you've picked the perfect gift. For a limited time, you can get 50% off at BlueNile.com. That's 50% off at BlueNile.com. Back at it again, another episode of the Blue Turf. This is Thad Bell from the Blue Testament, or another name coming soon. And with me, I have, as always, Eric Bergrud, uh, play-by-play, Kansas City, or color guy, right? For the most little, part, a little bit of both sometimes. I did on uh, Sirius XM right. uh, FC. I did a quarter play-by-play. So. Oh, but we're at the world famous KC Soccer Dome. Don't forget that. Yeah, yeah. You you have to correct me when I get these things uh, not quite perfect for you. But anyway, we are at the world famous Kansas City Soccer Dome and watching Comets practice. New face in, uh, well, a new old face out there, Mads Falk. I'm not sure if that's the right way to say his name. I just call him Mads. There you go. Uh, looking like he's uh, getting back into the groove a little bit. That's been uh, he's been out oh, from indoor for a while. But in case people didn't hear, he was the the player we alluded to last time we talked. Yeah, he's back in a, in a crowded midfield. It's going to be interesting to see where he lines up. And then Debray Holloman, who we also talked about last week and we were able to announce him last week, got his first action at Baltimore last weekend, and I expect him to get more minutes against Harrisburg coming up this Sunday. I was actually a little surprised he wasn't in the lineup for the, the first game last weekend, but I don't get to make those choices. Comments have been a little bit thin on defense uh, with Togba out long term, and I'm just assuming at this point we're not seeing him until next year because we haven't seen him yet. So uh, I know Nacho had a knock last weekend. That, what's the defense looking like to you right now? Well, and this is a challenge, and, and when we talk about that Florida game, Leo wound up floating where he was playing defense defensively, and then he would rotate with players and almost play a a dual target role offensively. The challenge right now is looking at, at their lineup and how many defenders that they have. They have Ray Lee. They have John Sosa. They have Debray Holloman. And then maybe Leo Gibson. And so unless another midfielder is going to drop back, I, 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 it, it feels like Leo is going to be tethered to the back line against Harrisburg this weekend. It kind of felt like Benji was back there a lot. I mean, I know... There's no in indoor. You often really don't have true positions as much as kind of roles, but he he did seem to be back there, kind of trying to play the the playmaker from the defensive end at points. Well, and they'll have to figure out. I mean, ideally, you'd want to have five defenders in your 16. They just haven't had a lot of luck with healthy defenders all season, and so they've gotten to this point. 
They play 22 games. They have two games remaining. Home and home against Harrisburg, and this is crunch time for the Commons. Need uh, need at least one win. Probably it would be great to have two if they get two. They're in the playoffs, right? Right, and we'll talk about scenarios for all six teams. Harrisburg is mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, but all the other six remain active. Milwaukee and Baltimore have already clinched a playoff berth. Florida, Utica, Casey, St. Louis vying for those last three. All right, uh, before we break that down too close, uh, the other line that we have questioned now is the target forward because Rian left the last match with, uh, with an injury. That leaves basically Zach Reggett and Junior and anybody else who Leo puts up there, including himself. That's a possibility. Also possibility they just play twos up front. I, mean, I guess we'll see Saturday night how it shakes out, but, but Rion went down hard Saturday. As far as I could tell, sprained ankle. At least that's what we heard. I haven't had an updated conversation with, with trainer Sean Dumers about this, but... They played without him in Baltimore. They actually, I thought, had a very smart, intelligent game plan against Baltimore. For reasons we'll get into, it didn't work out the way they had hoped. All right. Uh, well, let's, do we want to break down these last two games sure, in more let's detail? Go, let's, I mean, let's break them down as long or as short as you want to go, and then we can look ahead. Yeah, it, it, at this point, uh, breaking down losses is not as much fun as breaking down wins, but um, Florida game first here in Kansas City. Uh, it was a frustrating game for me to watch. Well, but it also tells you, I think, between that game and then the previous loss at home at Baltimore, how teams have decided that they're going to attack, for lack of a better word, the, the Comets strategically at Cable Dom Arena. We're going to bunker five behind the ball, and we're going to look for our opportunities to counter. And we saw that with that Baltimore loss a couple weeks ago, and then we saw it with, with the Florida loss that – both teams had success doing it, and we, we talked on here, Nick Vassos and I did, about the shots on goal being a nice stat, but fairly meaningless, because ultimately the only stat that matters is is the, the score, and 55-ish shots on goal for the Comets, and 14-ish for Florida, but Florida made their shots count, and a lot of them were on the counterattack, yep. or creating space back post and losing a, a, a runner. And so and I, I think that is the way you'll see teams matching up against the Comets moving forward. And so the question is how the Comets going to adjust to deal with it. But did they get shots? Yes. Were they all high-quality shots? No. Did Florida block a lot of shots? Absolutely. Yeah, I I don't remember the, t the total shots, like you said, it was around 55 or something. But it, it, at the end of three, I think it was 39 shots on 39 shots and one goal. That's kind of pitiful, quite honestly. I know there's a lot of blocked shots, but uh, they made some saves. But in 39 shots, you need more than one goal. Well, I think the team was frustrated. Just reading quotes from, from uh, player coach Leo Gibson, he was frustrated too because he was frustrated with shot selection. Things turned around in the fourth, but that second quarter we talked about last week, it wound up being another Achilles heel for yep. the Comets. And, and heading into to halftime, they were more or less with their backs against the wall, and it, it took them another quarter to finally – Get plus to get things rolling, and, and they ultimately ran out of time. Yeah, if, if there was a fifth quarter, maybe they make that comeback, right? But there wasn't, and it was uh, pretty frustrating. They were they were applying a lot of pressure in the fourth quarter, and they, they narrowed the score down, but fell short. Absolutely did. I, I thought it was a, from a fan's perspective. Let me say that again. From a neutral fan's perspective, right. that was a terrific game to watch. There was a lot of action. I would imagine for most Comets fans, a bit of frustration. It's not like the Comets had no opportunities. They did. It, it's just Florida frustrated them throughout the game. And while it felt like Kansas City had the ball most of the time, Florida pick and chose. 
their opportunities, and, and I think that made it even more frustrating is that everything Florida seemed to do worked well, and everything that Kansas City seemed to do didn't work. I don't know if you heard that horn, but we certainly did. I'm used to it. Yeah. Part of the ambiance of being at the world-famous Kansas City Soccer Dome. I, I think uh, Bud should start paying me every time I say that. Should, should. I mean, ultimately, you'll know that you've been successful is when people repeat world famous and and then then you'll know that that you have impact then uh, oh well actually it's you because you're the one that started it it's kind of like goalkeeping once you start saying it so many times people start repeating it and then it, that it has a life of its own all right so comments come up short at home against florida go back to baltimore uh, a better performance than the previous time but still come up short well and Let's peel it back several hours because in the, in the best laid plans, they had some travel issues, flight cancellation, players on different flights. They delayed the game. So they originally changed the start time because they knew this was going to be a challenge. And so it, it wound up getting moved. The official start time got moved a week or two ago. And then when it looked like they were having challenges again, it got pushed back. And so... It wound up being a 7.15 start time, Eastern time, yeah. and 11 players there. Now, technically speaking, they, the, should not have been able to start. The, they should not have been able to start because teams are required to have two goalkeepers in their lineup. I guess you could argue that they turned in a starting lineup that had both Tito Favela and, and Nicolau Neto. So, sure. I mean, they, if there's two goalkeepers on their scorecard, sure, let's start. But I thought the Comets did well, only giving up one goal before the rest of the team showed up. I thought that the Comets did well. They got they changed their philosophy going into Baltimore. Last time they tried to do a high press and, and got smoked, 92. Yep. This time they played more disciplined defensively and, and pick and chose their chances. And going late in the game, the score was tied. But ultimately, Baltimore found space. And the Comets, uh, what what could have been a, a potential point on the road, wound up being another loss and zero points. And uh, uh, what was interesting for me to watch is the banner in the Twitch chat because some select Baltimore fans were, were harping on Kansas City fans, complaining about the travel and everything else. And... Uh, in some ways, it's some selective amnesia because last year, for reasons we probably don't have a lot of time to get into, Baltimore missed a game in Milwaukee and a game in Kansas City, and the league wound up awarding one point for each game rather right. than replaying them. And so one of the good things in, uh, about Twitch is the opportunity for fan interaction, and yet I think that there's a level of hypocrisy and uh, – let's call it creative logic among fan bases all across the, the league, not just one team. And, and it, it gets heightened in those uh, testy Twitch ex exchanges that we now see every, every game, every weekend. Yeah. It, wonderful thing about uh, Twitch and other, and social media with Twitter, you can get on and argue without any logic or reason or sanity or, repercussions for a lot of those people saying things that they probably would have got punched if they had been in person. Yeah. But well, and there was a, on one of the uh, Facebook groups, there was a Baltimore fan who had mapped out a bus route and said, hey, you could have taken a bus from Kansas City, which if you think about it is highly illogical. If, if you leave Cable Dahmer Arena at 10 p.m. and it's a 15 and a half hour bus trip, not including stops, I mean, real it, that's cute, but that's not realistically what you're going to do. And so but that's not how you plan a schedule. That's absolutely not how you plan a schedule. And so I, mean, I, I think uh, there's going to be some reflection on this year about misses, but there's still an opportunity. There's still hope. I heard Zach Reggett on a, uh, another indoor soccer podcast uh, that was live this week make the case, which I've been contending all season long, particularly in, uh, when you look at the, the eastern side of the MASL, is make the playoffs, and anything's possible because you've had 
teams in the West talk about their records and their points and whatever else. Only one team in the East is making it to the final. Only one team in the West is making it to the final. If you get in, you have a chance. If you're Kansas City, you would much rather be a four seed rather than a five seed because four and five will have a play-in game to determine who gets uh, to take on the number one seed in, in the quarterfinals. And so we can talk a little bit about scenarios. There are some interesting matchups this weekend that definitely will have implications for the Comets. And, and in fact, when, when you talk about Utica, who's right ahead of Kansas City, fourth place Comets are fifth place. Both of those teams' remaining games are ultimately at the same time or close to the same time this coming Sunday and the following Saturday. So I guarantee there's going to be a lot of scoreboard watching oh, yeah. by fans on both teams. Uh, will we know this weekend if the Comets make the playoffs? It's possible. So so let's let's talk about where where things stand right now. So that the Comets are currently in fifth place. They've played 22 games. They have 29 points total. St. Louis is sixth place and the only team that could leapfrog Kansas City. They have played 21 games and they have 25 points total. St. Louis has finished their home schedule, so they're on the road. This weekend, they are at Milwaukee, which will be a difficult matchup for St. Louis. St. Louis, St. Louis has traditionally struggled, struggled in Milwaukee. Kansas City, Harrisburg at home. Now, Harrisburg's interesting. We, uh, Nick Bassos and I called their game in St. Louis on Friday, and they kept it close, but ultimately, for a lot of reasons, lost it down the end, down the stretch. But then they, they flew back, played Utica, and beat Utica in overtime there, and so you don't know exactly what to expect. But that's a, that's a winnable three points for the Comets. If the Comets were to win that one, they'd have 32 points. If St. Louis were to lose in Milwaukee, they would have 25 points still with the max they could receive would be 31. So that is one scenario where the Comets would qualify for the playoffs this weekend. So Milwaukee could help out Kansas City. They could. I mean, for for Kansas City to expect Milwaukee or any team to intentionally help them out, no. I think is a is a stretch. They may be the beneficiary of some some pr- good luck, but but I would I don't think that there's going to be a open arm approach by other teams in the East saying we really want Kansas City in the playoffs, so we're going to do whatever we can to to make it possible for them. Yeah, I think it would actually be the opposite because any I don't think any team out there would want Zach Reggett coming after him in the playoffs. I don't, I, I, you know, and I agree with that's right. And Milwaukee has its own challenges. So currently they play 21 games. They're in first place, 39 points total. But you look at their schedule. Yes, they have St. Louis at home, and they they absolutely need to win that one because then they go midweek to San Diego, which is going to be a challenge. And then they have to fly from San Diego to Harrisburg. And you might think, oh, hey, that's an easy one, but that's a lot of travel in one week time, and so I wouldn't bank on anything. They have both Baltimore and Florida nipping at at their heels there. Baltimore has their own challenges. They have a home and away with Mesquite, which if you, you had said this at the beginning of the season, they're looking at the schedule thinking, oh, pretty good. We're going to end up with Mesquite. They've been out of the league for a couple of years. It's going to be easy, but we've seen Mesquite this year. Mesquite beat the Comets, and I think that's going to be a challenge for Baltimore. And then they have to end at Utica, which is a very difficult place to play, and so there's no guarantees for Baltimore. Florida, on the other hand, all three games are at home. Utica this Sunday, and then the following weekend, two games against St. Louis. St. Louis has struggled on the road. St. Louis has played Florida really well in St. Louis, right? right? We'll see what happens. And if for some reason St. Louis loses at Milwaukee, those are two meaningless games for all intents and purposes at the end of the year, provided Kansas City wins. And so Florida, of all teams, has an interesting 
pathway to first place, but there's a lot of soccer still to play in the next couple of weeks. Absolutely. That's that's why we could never completely break this stuff down until now, and even now it's a lot of variables. So let's talk about Utica. Utica is two points ahead of Kansas City. They both played the same number of games, 22. On Sunday afternoon, right before Kansas City starts against Harrisburg, they will be at Florida, and Florida has a lot of incentive to win because they have a, a decent shot at a one seed. UCFC then plays home against Baltimore, and so Kansas City sitting at 29 points. You have Harrisburg here, have to focus on that one. Win that, win at Harrisburg the following Saturday. There's potential to, to host that play-in game. Serious potential, but yes. a lot of things, not, not a lot, a few things have to go right, but it's its definitely possible. Number I don't one want to thing say is, probable, I just want to say right. definitely possible. Number one thing is Comets have to win. They have to play better than they have in the last few games. They have to get points at home and on the road. It's, it's so How many times did we say they have to get points on the road and they would drop every point? Well, and we've said they had to get three points at home, and, and they dropped three points against Baltimore. They dropped three points about against Florida, and now they face Harrisburg. Mathematically locked out, nothing to lose. But you think about who's there. Lasia Tetsane, who was part of the trade that brought Reggett here, he has been lights out the last couple of weeks. Yeah. We, we saw Nick and I saw him in St. Louis, a couple great goals there had a great game at UCFC and so he's been on a roll you think he's motivated to show something against the Comets oh yeah and then how about the the person who scored the game-winning goal against UCFC this weekend Dom Francis who would play on loan with Kansas City and I'm sure he's going to want to show something they also have a a terrific young goalkeeper who has a decent shot of being the newcomer of the year in the MASL, Chase Vosvik, he's been terrific. And so this is a team that can steal points. So the Comets can't go into Sunday's game assuming anything's possible. The one person who will not be there is Big Mike, Mike Da Silva. Mike Da Silva is sitting on a, a suspension right now. So Friday night in St. Louis, let's just say things got chippy and he, he got uh, a couple love taps from behind from uh, his former Kansas City Comets teammate, Kevin Ellis, and he turned around and squared him. And so what happened was the DRC ultimately reviewed the video. They let Ellis's one-game suspension for the red card stand, so he's right. already served that. For Mike, he was already getting a, a one-game red card for, or suspension for that red card. He was already getting a, a penalty point accumulation suspension which took him out of, of this game in Kansas City, but they added a game on top of that. So the Comets won't see him in, in here in, um, in Cable Dom Arena, nor will they see him at the uh, Equine uh, Show Arena in, in Harrisburg. And so I'm sure Big Mike Da Silva wanted to prove something against the Comets, but he won't have the opportunity either on the road or at home. Yeah, uh, having just seen that on uh, on the the game, I was actually surprised that uh, De Silva got the extra and Ellis didn't. But so not I, terrible, uh, I guess. Two two things on that, and, and, and let's not talk about who deserved what on the field. But I mean, that's a whole separate conversation about who deserved what. But if you look at where the DRC came from most recently. Tavoy Morgan got three games for throwing a punch against Mesquite. And so once you set that bar, where do you go? Right. Right? Ellis didn't throw a, a clean punch. Right? But, but A clean punch. But, right. But, In quotes right there. Right. But there's video evidence the other way. And so whether it's fair or not, whether it's... Uh, Justice was served. The precedent was set, and yeah. so that's I, where we're at. I do understand that. That uh, that's a debate I had last night actually with uh, with a friend, and 
yeah, it was not a clean video evidence of a, of a clean punch. I, I may have interpreted it that way myself from having seen it, but that's others may disagree. That's fair. So having seen this in person, uh, again, we're not talking about who deserved what on the field because I think that if you were to take a poll of players and fans across the league, you, you, you might hear a different story in terms of deserving, right? Right. But in terms of interpreting infractions. Based upon video evidence. Based upon video evidence and the precedent that has been set already this year that informed the DRC's decision. All right. Uh, I'm just kind of bummed for Mike, but I'm kind of happy that comments don't have to face him. So They still have players, Danny DePrima. Is, is a competitive veteran. Matt Brame, I believe, is out on penalty points. I think he picked up points, a, uh, a blue card against UCFC. I saw him on the list. So they're going to be short some players. So it'll be interesting to see how Harrisburg adapts. Biggest point of uh, what I'll be looking for, though, is just how Kansas City comes out. If they, if they come out and they don't, do well in that first half the pressure will be on and i i fear that they may not rise to it at that point if if they come out strong uh, they got it i i think they need to play their game and not worry too much about harrisburg's how they're going to game plan them because i would expect pat healy to to make some adjustments based on his roster availability but also based on how other teams have played against kansas city i think if kansas city plays their game and and doesn't worry about what ifs they're going to be fine i think a loose kansas city comet team is a successful kansas city comet team a tight kansas city comet team you don't know what to expect i think that's a pretty accurate statement anything else we should cover today eric well we will uh have an opportunity next week to not only look back at harrisburg look ahead to the the match at harrisburg but maybe We'll have a, a cleaner idea of what the, the playoffs would look like, what a play, play-in game would look like. Kansas City still has a mathematical opportunity to finish above that four seed, but it would require so much mental jujitsu and help from other teams. Let's not talk about it today, but maybe we'll revisit this next week. It's, it's mathematically possible they could finish in third, but I'm going to say not very likely at this point. So. Yeah, yeah, and and really, I think that there may be some benefit finishing not in Baltimore's pathway in that right. first round, right? So a play a play in game. If this if the regular season were to end today, Utica would host Kansas City in the play in game. The winner would play Milwaukee. I think Kansas City is a much better matchup. Let me say it a different way. Milwaukee is a better much much better ma- matchup for Kansas City than Baltimore is. Let Baltimore and Florida fight it out, and y- you'll wind up playing the winner. So Comets fans who may be distraught and thinking, oh, there's no hope, I, mean, I-, I think there's always hope when you make the playoffs. I think in that playing game, whether it's in Utica, Kansas City, or wh- whatever else, it's a winner-take-all thing, and anything can be possible. And I don't see one Eastern team that is so dominant that they're guaranteed to win anything. So no. make the playoffs on a few things go your way, you're in the final. And the one thing we know about the Comets is when they are on their game, like you said, when they're loose, when they're when when things go their way, they are a match for any team in the East easily. When they're not going their way, they are also a match for every team in the East in the other direction. It's they are incredibly inconsistent this year, uh, and uh, we'll have to maybe try to break that down next week because uh, I'd like I, I keep wanting to go. What went wrong this season? We thought they would be so much better, but I don't think we want to do that just yet. So well, season's not over. I think we'll uh, have an opportunity next week to take the pulse of what we experienced Sunday, how, how the players are feeling, how the fans are feeling. And uh, and who knows? This could either be uh, Comets have qualified for the playoffs, so let's look ahead, or, oh, no, 
Comets need to get serious at Harrisburg because if not, they could be on the outside looking in. But we'll see. It's ultimately the cliche. That's why they play the game. They need to get serious for both games, no matter how you look at it. Uh, so in case you've noticed a different tone in the ambiance, the Comets practice has finished and a kids camp has started. There is about 70 kids running around in red Comet shirts and a dozen or so Comets out there giving them lessons. Which is, which is fun. If you have an opportunity on your spring break to kick it with the Comets, how, what a cool what staycation, right? Yeah. yeah. My, uh, my daughter has actually done that a couple of different times when she was young. Oh, we have one more thing to talk about. So on Sunday, it's going to be a long day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, the, so the Comets are hosting a 5K at, at 8 a.m. at Cable Dawn Marina. It's a benefit for Team Fidelis. Who's a, a good organization. Very great organization. is ultimately the beneficiary of the auction of the jerseys that the Comets will play in. They're going to do their, it's their military uh, game. And so there'll be special uniforms that they'll wear on Sunday. They'll go on auction. But... I will be out there early running in this, and I guarantee I was in much better running shape when I did the last 5K, which was like in August of 21, perhaps. And so they uh, kind of surprised me by putting a photo of me running last time in their promotional material, so I guess that means I have to run. But it's not too late. Go to the Comets website. I think it's comets.com slash 5K, something like that, where you can still register for the event. I will see you out there. You can wave at me when you run past me, and I will try to be gracious in my humility <laughs> as I'm going down the path. But 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 uh, you're not going to outrun everybody. I'm not going to outrun everybody. What's what's fun about this race is you do the parking lot, the sort of an interesting circuit, and then you wind up on the blue turf at the finish line, and so it's an opportunity to run on the field. Which, which will be fun for everybody. And if you've never been on the blue turf, it's quite the experience. Do they have to wipe their feet before they go out there? Oh, I think you can do it great. But since you mentioned that, there is a chance of rain. And so I, it's going to be an interesting day. You have an opportunity to cool down from that. And then, uh, as I've told a few people, I go from running gear to a coat and tie to get ready for the broadcast that afternoon. Uh, a friend of mine and his son will be out there running with you. Actually, Mike Kuhn from our site, oh, awesome. uh, also known as Down the Byline, and the other stats guru in town. So, Awesome. All right. Uh, anything else? Here we are. It's Wednesday where we're recording this, and uh, Sunday can't come soon enough. All right. Thank you for the time, Eric, and we are out.